Welcome to Tech Photo Blog. This is episode number 67. This week, I'll finally be introducing a new ultra high speed flash that a team of us have been working on for well over a year. So, this is an air gap flash, and I've actually uh, made one of these many years ago and put up a blog post about it. But this is a much refined design uh, to make it more reliable and robust and safer. So this is what I'll be talking about today. And before I really get into that, I think I have to give you a little bit of history on xenon flashes. So this is what um, pretty much all of the flashes on the market uh, work on. Uh, it's basically a, a xenon flash tube and they are, are basically a tube filled with xenon gas. And the great thing there is without that much energy, you get a whole lot of light. The problem is that uh, these aren't so fast. Now, air gaps are much faster, and, and we'll talk about that. But, you know, I mean, these are really superior to the air gap flash in, in every way. So unless you really need the speed, you know, this has got a nice case. It's got lots of modes. It'll sync better with your cameras. Um, uh, it uses less energy. These are runnable. You can run these off of AA batteries, which is pretty amazing. Uh, the voltage inside of these are typically 300 volts, whereas an air gap flash like this, I run this at 16,000 volts. So this has got a lot of downsides because of the, the high voltage. And also you'd see a big hefty flash like this, many pounds. It must be super bright, but it's not. It's actually dimmer than a lot of these flashes, even at their low power settings. So, um, you, I mean, that's a lot of negatives, but what this does have is it has speed. It is very, very high speed flash. So these flashes at their lowest power settings will typically have a duration of one twenty thousandth to one thirty thousandth of a second. So, um, that's fast enough for, you know, a lot of things out there. But if you're trying to photograph shooting bullets or something that's really high speed, that's not going to be fast enough. Um, whereas there's many ways of measuring uh, the speed of a flash. I'll probably have a whole separate episode on that in the future. But this has a duration of approximately a millionth of a second. So that's 30 times faster than sort of the fastest one of these that you can get. Um, and sort of how that equates is if you're photographing something moving um, a thousand feet per second, that's a typical bullet, um, you would have that bullet travel about 0.4 inches with this kind of a flash. It'll be a blurry mess if you're sort of zoomed in on the bullet and you've got, you know, you're, you're photographing something exploding. Still interesting photos, but it will not be crisp. With this kind of flash, the bullet will move around a hundredth of an inch. That'll look much crisper and it'll just sort of make the photo look different. I mean, that's, that's really the advantage of, of an air gap flash. It, it enables new kinds of photographs for this ultra high speed uh, photography that, that people are, are starting to do now that you just can't get with another flash. So while there are a lot of downsides, and I, I didn't do a good job at self, you know, really promoting this kind of flash by listing all those negatives, but I mean, the reality is this allows a new kind of photography, and you can't really say that about a lot of things. You know, you can get a new camera or something, and, and that really doesn't allow new types of photography. An air gap flash like this actually just enables a type of photography that wasn't possible with a standard flash. So a great way to show just how it enables new kinds of photography are with images. And these are a few test shots that I did with the AirGap flash and the camera axe. And uh, the camera axe with the projectile sensor actually lets you position the bullet in the scene. And what I did here is I just sort of incremented uh, the bullet, stepped the bullet one inch at a time through the scene and you can actually do much finer grain adjustments than that but I just sort of wanted to put a few images here to sort of show you what the air gap flash is capable of. And here is an image with a standard flash and you can see that uh, it's interesting 
right? It's, it's not a bad shot, but you're just never going to be able to visualize the bullet. The bullet will always be a really blurry mess. And uh, all of the shattering glass is also kind of just blurred across the scene. So it's not a bad photo, but it's just not the same kind of photo you can take with an air gap flash. So now we'll do a quick overview of the physical design of the air gap flash and give you a look at what it's uh, made of. So here's the power connector. Uh, uses a standard PC plug, goes into the wall, a fuse for safety, an on-off switch. This red uh, button it forces an immediate uh, test fire of the flash. Uh, it helps you get the lighting correct and stuff without hooking it up to the camera axe. And this BNC connector is how you connect the air gap flash to the camera axe, and a cable for that is included. Now I've already removed the uh, eight screws that hold the case together, um, four on this side and four on the other. Now the first thing you do when you take off the case is you use this uh, discharge stick to ensure that the capacitor is discharged. Now if you uh, hadn't, if the capacitor wasn't discharged, there would be a loud shocking noise um, that would occur when you do this. That's okay. The capacitor is rated for high discharge and actually that's happening every time the flash triggers. Um, but the uh, voltage stored in this capacitor is definitely lethal and uh, you know I suggest that people um, unless they understand high voltage uh, don't even open up the case like this and have it properly serviced by someone else. But then on the inside, once you know that it's discharged, uh, you can take a look at things here. Um, I'll go over the actual electronics probably in a dedicated uh, future video, but um, there's a pretty elegant design here. And uh, the business end of the air gap flash is here. It's got a diffuser on it right now. So a question I got quite frequently on the blog post I did on how to build your own air gap flash a few years ago was could I make them one? And I've always said no, I've never built anyone an air gap flash before this. But uh, the reason I made this more robust, reliable, and safer design was so that I could get it into the hands of more photographers. And uh, I'm not going to put this on the Dreaming Robots store like I do the camera axe and sell it to the general public because it still is a pretty dangerous device. It's also more expensive and harder to make and stuff. So uh, for now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to offer a few of them for sale um, to photographers and they, they should contact me directly through uh, the contact information in the show notes and explain to me that you know they're serious about photography hopefully you'll have um, high-speed photography and uh, hopefully you'll have some example shots where you've done high-speed things with a standard flash and you can say see it's just not this, this flash that I have isn't fast enough. An air gap flash would, would solve that kind of problem. And I think that kind of dedication will go a long way and convince me that you're one of the people I should send these to. And uh, I'll also say that um, they're not going to be inexpensive. They're going to be $2,000 at this time. And that's just because there's a lot of expensive parts in these air gap flashes. We'll just sort of slowly trickle them out to uh, photographers that are serious about high speed photography. Um, also, you'll have to sign a safety disclosure, and I'm only shipping to the United States at this time. So, sorry to all you people in, in Europe and around the world that would like to get one, but I, I just can't uh, figure out all of the, the international laws for a device like this. So, at this time, it, it only ships to people and addresses in the United States. Now there's a lot more that I want to cover with the air gap flash and I'll be getting into that with uh, future videos and answering people's questions on the forums. So uh, yeah, definitely check uh, out the forums and, and keep an eye out for new videos with more information. I plan, I, I can think of many videos I'd like to do detailing specific parts 
of the air gap flash. But this was meant to be an overview and it's already running kind of long. So I'm gonna wrap it up now and uh, say thanks for watching.